Hello and welcome to the introduction video of the YMFC AL, where AL stands for Auto Level, and Auto Level means that the quadcopter will level itself when the pitch and roll sticks of the transmitter are in the center position. Yes, after many requests, I decided to modify the YMFC 3D version 2 code and create the YMFC AL. And as you can see in this video, it performs very well. So without further ado, let's start with how it works. In another video that I made, I explained how to get the roll and pitch angles with the use of a gyro and an accelerometer. I will link these two videos in the comment section. I basically added the IMU code from these videos to the YMFC AL flight controller code here. Now that we know the pitch and roll angles from the IMU, we can program the flight controller to automatically level the quadcopter. So for example, if the quadcopter is angled to the right and the stick of the transmitter is in the center position, the flight controller should simulate a steering command until the pitch angle of the quadcopter is zero degrees. And when the stick is at maximum roll right, the flight controller should simulate a steering command until the roll angle is, let's say, 35 degrees. There are several ways to do this, but I prefer the simplest one that takes advantage of the PID controller characteristics. To simulate a roll or pitch command, the receiver input pulse needs to be manipulated. Regardless of the transmitter settings, the YMFC flight controller uses a standardized 1000 till 2000 microsecond pulse, where 1500 microseconds represent a center stick position. When the quadcopter rolls to the right, the roll angle is positive and the receiver pulse needs to be lowered to steer in the opposite direction. I will simply multiply the angle of the quadcopter with 15 and subtract it from the receiver pulse as an angle correction. The angle correction calculation is done in these lines. And the subtraction is done here. So let's say that the quadcopter is angled at 10 degrees. The angle correction is 10 times 15 is 150. Let's assume that the transmitter stick is in the center position, so the receiver pulse value is 1500. So 1500 minus the 150 angle correction is 1350. And that means that the quadcopter will roll in the opposite direction. Because of the characteristics of the PID controller, this approach works fine. At 1 degree, the result is 1485. And when the angle is 0, the result is 1500 and the quadcopter isn't moving anymore. Ok, this makes sense so far. But what happens when the stick of the transmitter is moved, let's say halfway to the right? The receiver pulse is now 1750. Because the quadcopter is still level, the angle correction is still zero and the PID controller will rotate the quadcopter to the right. The angle of the quadcopter increases and the angle correction also increases. When the angle is 5 degrees, the angle correction is 75. So 1750 minus 75 is 1675 and the quadcopter continues to roll. At an angle of 16.7 degrees, the angle correction is 250 and the result is 1750 minus 250 is 1500. This means that the PID controller stops the motion of the quadcopter 
so it will stay at this 16.7 degree angle. And basically, this is how the YMFC AL works. Very simple and extremely robust. Building the YMFC AL quadcopter is fairly easy. I made a full tutorial on my website that you can follow. First, download the YMFC AL software package via the link here. This software package includes a schematic, a README file, and some Arduino sketches. To build the quadcopter, you need hardware. I made a complete $150 hardware list that should work fine. This includes a charger, flight battery, transmitter, a frame, motors, and ESCs, etc. Now, please note that only the MPU 6050 gyro will work with the YMFC AL flight controller. This is because it has a built-in gyro and an accelerometer that are needed to get the quadcopter angles. And with all the parts available, it is time to build the quadcopter based on the schematic. Follow the steps on my website and watch the video that I made about hardware. The link can be found here on my website. I also included some photos of my own quadcopter on the media page for IDs and reference. Take your time and you will notice that it is fairly easy to build. If you have any questions during the build, you can always check the Q&A page. Most questions are already explained in detail. And when the hardware is ready, it is time to upload the setup sketch to the Arduino. Leave the flight battery unconnected and open the serial monitor at 57.6 kilobots. Follow the steps on the screen as I'm showing here. If any errors arrive during the setup procedure, you can get more information on the Q&A page. Click on question 2 and all the errors are explained in detail. When the setup is completed without any errors, it is time to check the gyro and the receiver inputs. Upload the ESC calibration sketch to the Arduino and open the serial monitor again at 57.6 kilobots. Don't connect the flight battery at this point. Now send a single R via the serial monitor as I am showing here. After a short message, the receiver signals are shown on the screen. All the values should run from 1000 till 2000 with a 1500 microsecond center pulse as you can see here. 
These are standardized values based upon the information that was gathered and stored in the EEPROM during the setup procedure. It's also possible to test the start procedure. To simulate the start of the quadcopter, move the throttle stick to the lowest position and jaw left. When the jaw is back in the center position, the start value will be 2 and the quadcopter is started. To stop the quadcopter, lower the throttle and jaw right. The start value becomes 0 and the quadcopter is stopped. This of course will only work with the flight controller software installed, but this is just a check to see if everything is working correct. If all the transmitter channels are working correct, it is time to check the IMU angles. To do this, send an A via the serial monitor. After a short message, the gyro will start to calibrate. Now don't move the quadcopter during calibration. After that, the pitch and roll angles are shown. Check if the angles correspond with the movement of the quadcopter. Nose up is positive pitch. And nose down is negative pitch. Left wing up is positive roll. And left wing down is negative roll. Nose right is positive jaw. And nose left is negative jaw. The jaw value is the output of the gyro and will go back to zero if the jaw rotation movement stops. This is normal. And when everything is working as it is supposed to, it is time for the next step, calibrating the ESCs. This step is very important because it synchronizes the ESCs. This means that all the ESCs start at the same moment and produce the same amount of trust. The ESC calibration sketch is still uploaded to the Arduino because we used it for checking the receiver and gyro data. If not, re-upload the ESC calibration sketch. Remove all the props and check the manual of the ESC on how to calibrate them. In my case, I need to put the throttle in the highest position, connect the flight battery, and after some beeps, I need to lower the throttle. After this, the motors will start at the same throttle position and will run at the same speed. The next step is paramount. It involves balancing the props and motors of your quadcopter. If this step is neglected, the performance of the quadcopter will be disappointing because the gyro and the accelerometer will produce unwanted noise. The quadcopter will perform jerky and unstable. So, how to balance the props and motors? Well, there are several very useful methods known to do this from prop balancers to lasers. But with the YMFC AL, we are going to use the accelerometer of the MPU6050. With all the props removed, upload the ESC calibration sketch to the Arduino. Keep the USB cable connected and connect the flight battery. Keep the throttle in the lowest position to prevent another ESC calibration. Now send a 1 via the serial monitor and wait for the confirmation. After a few seconds there are values running across the screen. These numbers represent the amount of vibrations and are not standardized, so you can't compare them with any other method. Slowly increase the throttle and the right front motor should start to spin in a counterclockwise direction. If the motor rotates in the wrong direction, you need to switch two of the three motor wires. Now mount the counterclockwise prop and hold the motor mount firmly in your hand and increase the throttle to halfway. You can feel the vibrations and the number on the screen will increase. 
Tap the motor and put a small piece of electrical insulation tape on one of the blades. Start the motor again and watch and feel if the vibrations are getting less or worse. If the vibrations are getting worse, try the other blade. If the vibrations are getting less, try to add an extra piece of tape. Keep experimenting until the vibrations are minimal. Sometimes it might be necessary to remount the prop to get it better aligned with the motor. Here you can see the numbers on the screen when I run one motor of my own quadcopter. When motor 1 is done, it is time to do the same with motor 2, which is the right rear motor. To activate this motor, send A2 and check the rotation first. Do the same for motor 3 and 4. Again, everything is described in detail on my website. Sending A5 will enable all motors to check the total vibration, as you can see here. And after balancing the props and motors, it is time to upload the YMFC AL flight controller sketch. The last check that I will show you should always be done to prevent unnecessary crashes. Connect the flight battery and don't move the quadcopter during calibration. This is indicated by a fast blinking of the LED. Now hold the quadcopter still and firmly in your hand and start the motors. Increase the throttle until the quadcopter feels weightless. Now the quadcopter should level itself and when the pitch and roll sticks are moved, the quadcopter should tilt in the corresponding direction. If this is not the case, there is something wrong and you should not try to fly the quadcopter. Recheck everything and solve the problem before even thinking of flying. And when the quadcopter response are normal, it is time for a careful first flight. Connect the flight battery and don't move the quadcopter until the calibration procedure is finished. Try to fly above grass and never indoors. Only start the motors when the quadcopter is placed on the ground. Increase the throttle and the quadcopter should lift off vertically when the pitch and roll sticks are in the center position. Keep the quadcopter as low as possible in the beginning. When the quadcopter is drifting to one side, use the subtrims on your transmitter to level the quadcopter. Depending on your hardware, it might be necessary to adjust the PID settings. But in most cases, the stock PID values will give you a flyable quadcopter. And that's it. You can now further develop and improve the code and add extra features if you want to. Please share your comments below and give this video a thumbs up if you learned something.